Hello, my people. It is I, Cool Ken Jack, coming at you again with another little short review, which is probably not going to be that short. All right, so I told you guys a couple days, two or three days ago, we published uh, episode three of the Knuckle Dragger's Guide to Culture. I said that I had a, a thing I was ready to do, and I finally finished the book I was looking at. Again, because we can't do anything that's you know, related to each other, it's now for something completely different. So I actually looked at a self-help book which I don't have a lot of experience with self-help books. I mean, I've only read a couple of them occasionally, and most of the time I find them to be really irritating, full of people talking about false positivity and all this other bullshit. But I actually found a book that I really liked, and actually had some pretty good advice in it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I got this book not because that I thought it was going to be a good book, but I thought it was going to be funny because it's just because of the title. But I was surprised. It was actually, I agreed with a lot of it. Ironically, it, it kind of fit into a lot of my own kind of mentality about life. And it kind of made me think about a couple things. So the book we're looking at right now is known as The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life. By It's by Mark Manson, and it's uh, was published by Harper Publishing in 2016, if I'm reading this correctly. So it's an interesting book. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go through the chapters. Like I'm just going to talk about what it was kind of brought up. I mean, I may get them kind of mixed up because a lot of these things roll into each other. So the first chapter, he talks about uh, people being obsessed about too many things and something known as this feedback loop from hell. The feedback loop from hell is the first part that really kind of st struck to me. And it's this idea that a lot of people have in their heads, right, where they want to do something, whether that be pursue a relationship or a job or, you know, just do something they've always wanted to do. And then there's that self-doubt that feeds into it. You know, you start making excuses as to why you can't do something. And then that feeds into your anxiety or your, your lack of uh, confidence in that, which feeds into your self-doubt loathing, which feeds back into this thing you want to do that you don't want to do. And as you can see, it's this endless cycle that he brings up. There was another part of it, too. I think he talks about the opposite end of that. One of the, one of the things that this guy really brings up a lot is people oftentimes fall into one of two categories, two extremes. Either you have people that are way too self-confident and have no struggles in life, because they're just perpetually trying to be positive and stuff. That's what the second pro uh, chapter really gets into is happiness is a problem. And, and the idea he gets into is that we live in a society that is forcibly positive. We're always around people talking about, you know, you, you go online, you look on Facebook and stuff, you see all these people living perfect lives, but it's all, it's all bullshit. Happiness, true happiness doesn't come from, you know, buying that car you've always wanted or, you know, you know, just frivolous crap or playing a new video game. It comes from solving problems in your life. This is something he brings up. He also talks about uh, we all choose our struggles in life, right? We all have certain kinds of struggles. One of the things he actually brings up that was kind of an interesting thing for me that I never really thought about is this idea that even people that don't have a lot of struggle, you know, because he talks about how he was, he grew up in kind of an upper middle class family. Most of his life, he really never had any real struggles in his life. And this kind of fed into a lot of his problems. But yeah, so in the, uh, the chapter, he goes on about you know, people's emotions are often overvalued. People think that their emotions are special, that they're unique, that because they go through problems that no one else can understand them. But pretty much everything you've ever been through is something that you, that someone else has gone through. Right. You know, chapter three gets into this thing where he talks about how you're not special. And this is something that I really, really, you know, this is something I've always kind of told myself is you, I'm not special, right? I'm just some schmuck living life. Things are going to go wrong. Exceptionalism is often a anxiety a lot of people deal with. People think that they're special. And because they think that they're special, that they're entitled to certain things and things should just roll in. Everything they want to do should just happen, right? There are individuals like this in our society. A lot of first world bullshit, right? And at the other point, there's people on the other extreme that, you know, they tell themselves they're nothing but shit and they're exceptionally uh, crap, basically, is what he says. It, it all kind of feeds back into our egos, right? We have to believe that we're unique in some way, either whether that be through uh, self-loathing or just narcissism itself. People think that they're unique and newsflash or not. Right, that's kind of what chapter three gets into. And, uh, you know, one of the things he talks about is if you're not really special, what's the point? That's like the chapters kind of come in little sections. Like I said, he brings up the tyranny of exceptionalism, uh, which, again, is this idea that we're unique. And because we're unique, things should just fall in line. Things are going to fall apart. You know, one of the things he talks about is this, this thing, you know, stop me if you've heard this one, right? You're at work and something goes wrong. And then you sit there and you go, why, and why me? Why me? Why me? Now, on a conscious level, most people recognize that it's not that anything, the universe isn't 
picking on you in particular. But we still get into that mindset of why is this bullshit happening to me? When really you should be acknowledging that things are just going to go wrong and you have to accept that. Even if you don't accept it, it's going to happen no matter what. And chapter four gets into this idea of the value of suffering. Now this was actually something that uh, really kind of started making me, really got me into the book. Chapter four is where it talks about uh, people's uh, suffering or what defines us as people, really. Uh, He talks about something known as a self-awareness onion, right? This is the example he gives, kind of this analogy he gives, like, the first level of the onion, you peel it away and you learn a little bit about yourself and you start to realize, you know, some of your flaws. And the more you peel away at this onion, right, quote unquote, the more you learn about yourself, but it causes you to cry, you know, suffer. So suffering does that. So oftentimes, especially in the United States and other first world countries, there are people that will go really long periods of time in their lives where they've never really had any real struggles. They think they have, but ultimately their struggles are superficial crap. And because of that, they've never had to really define themselves. Uh, One of the things he brings up is that these people will eventually have to. Everybody does. Uh, One of the things he talks about is uh, rock star problems, right? Uh, This is where he talks about people who, because they don't know who they are, they haven't really struggled and really had a real understanding of what society is about, you know, and the human condition, because, you know, this, I get the feeling that this book is really for younger people. That's one of the things I kind of understand about this. I mean, I mean, it could be wrong. I might be reading into that, but what Mark is talking about, but I get the idea is this book is in particular for millennials, which, yeah, a lot of millennials really think they understand suffering. They think they understand society. You, you've probably all seen this at some point. You know, you go onto a blog or a YouTube video or something, you got some 20-something trying to tell everybody how the world is, right? Because they're in college and they're special, right? But, you know, these are people that have never, you know, they never had to get a job. They've been living with their family that's taken care of them their whole lives. They've been pretty much given everything in their life, just just handed to them. And they're going to college, which is essentially a giant baby fucking nursery, for, essentially, where they're... They're taught certain things from teachers, and you know, there are not all teachers are like this, but a lot of college professors, you guys have probably seen this, do this kind of thing. They isolate you, they tell you how the world is, and that's an easy way to look at the world, right? It's very, very tempting to just kind of accept what people tell you, or to just go the opposite extreme and act like you're profound because you just disagree with everything people told you. He talks about rock star problems. So one of the things he talks about is when he was younger, he always thought he was gonna be a rock star. You know, he had this dream in his head, and he never really did anything to actually pursue it. Like, he practiced a couple times and gave up on it. He kept talking about being a rock star, but it never he never put in the actual effort. And he talks about our values being misguided. You know, because people oftentimes don't have the experience they need to live life, and because they're just jumping around from new, new experience to new experience, and they're never actually having to struggle, their values are misguided to put it in a nicer way. And one of the one of the main things that human beings struggle with is defining what are good and bad values. And that can only be achieved through learning about who you are, self-awareness, which a lot of people have a huge blind spot to their own issues. You know, for me, I'll give you an example. You know, one of my main issues in life is that I often, I don't, I don't, uh, he has this, he had this problem he talks about where he was often dating women that, you know, just, just sleeping with women because he thought that he was in love and he didn't know these chicks. He'd sleep with them and he'd move on to the next girl. Ironically, me, I, I can kind of, I can relate to this on the opposite end of that. I grew up around, and I brought this up in another video, I grew up around a lot of people with very, very volatile, unhealthy relationships. And because of that, I often don't pursue romantic relationships. It's something that I, I really do need to work on. And it's something I've known about for a long time. You know, this is a problem that I have. Being around people and opening up to other people really. Like, really letting people know what's actually going on. Because, to me, you know, people are going to disappoint you, right? It's not a healthy way to look at the world, either. Chapter 5, he talks about how, you know, yes, you know, we do have a lot of choices to make, and that can be scary. And a lot of people don't want to make choices, but even choosing not to make any major life decisions is a choice. You have these people that are often coast in life. They'll just jump from job to job. They'll go to new experience, new experience, and they'll never really sit down and figure out what they really want out of life. And that's a choice. So we go long periods of time dealing with that. Uh, Another thing he brings up too, and this was kind of goes back to the whole value of suffering, he talks about the responsibility slash fault fallacy. This is often people will talk about this, right? He talks about how uh, when something bad happens, it's your choice how you respond to it. And apparently, and this can rub people the the wrong way because it's a scary idea. He talks about this idea that not everything that happens to you is your fault. If you have a, you know, a cousin or something that dies in a tragic car accident, you didn't choose that. That just happened. That's not your fault. But how you respond to that is your responsibility. Oftentimes, we have things dumped into our lap that we have no, we had nothing to do with, right? But at the same time, we still have a responsibility to ourselves to how we respond, right? A lot of people don't want to take responsibility for the things in their own lives. Because there are things that are dumped into our laps we don't choose. 
but at the same time, we still choose how we respond to them. He gets into, uh, in chapter five, he also gets into this idea that uh, there are certain people that love to be victims. This is another thing that I find myself struggling with sometimes. You know, woe is me, my life sucks, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody does this at some point. If you keep staying in that mindset, you're never going to grow as a person. You think, oh, the universe is out to get me. My struggles are so, so insurmountable. You're never going to grow as a person. And chapter six is another one that's kind of interesting. Uh, literally, the chapters, you're wrong about everything. So when he gets into this, uh, you know, first part he says, but so am I, right? The idea is that uh, ultimately because we're people and we're skewed and we have very subjective views of the world, we can never be 100% right on any situation. There's usually more to a situation. Very rarely is somebody 100% correct on anything. And there's a danger to this mindset of I'm right and everybody else is wrong. This can prevent you from seeing other people's point of view on any situation. It makes it very hard to empathize with other people, you know, because you might not see what's actually going on. You might look at somebody's life and go, well, you fucked up your own life. And you don't know that all the things that led to the events that people have had, right? There are also people that because they want to be right about everything and they don't want to question who they are and what they could be wrong about, they often avoid questioning themselves and their beliefs, which is another dangerous mindset to have. If you never, if you always choose to avoid questioning what you believe, you will never grow. And this is what this story or this book really gets into, this idea you need to work at your own growth. The, the whole, you know, he also, also, I believe it's in this chapter or one of the earlier chapters, he talks about this self, this false positivity movement people often have. There are people in this world that will pretend to be happy all the time, like to pretend that uh, everything's okay. False positivity. It's a huge issue. And this was something I really latched on. It's a huge issue in the first world. People live these fake lives where they pretend everything's fucking hunky-dory and they never want to deal with their problems. But the problems are still there. You're just avoiding them. And they're going to catch up with you eventually. So the best mentality to have is, okay, these are my problems in my life and these are the steps I need to take to do something about them. If you don't do that, you're just gonna, they're just going to keep creeping up on you and you'll never move past that. The chapter 7, he talks, uh, the chapter's known as uh, The Failure is the Way Forward. Failure is the key to success. It's kind of what he brings up. The stumbling, the, the struggles you go through to try something new, and the, the fucking up helps you learn. It's the only way to actually become a truly successful individual is to fail constantly. Life is failure. It's a constant stumble. You're constantly hitting your head on shit figuratively speaking, right? You have to fail. There are people in the world, this is another problem a lot of people have, where they don't want to try. They'll never try anything new because they don't want to fail. So that's kind of chapter seven. Chapter eight gets into the importance of saying no. Uh, you have to set boundaries in your life. Rejection is also something you're gonna to have to live with. There are a lot of people in this world that are very entitled individuals that cannot handle being told no. And this is important to you as a person. Being told no and realizing you're not gonna get everything you want is the only way to form real relationships. With there are people out there in this world, all they want is somebody to do the thing, to fill their needs. You know, he talks about in this, uh, Chapter 8 particularly gets into relationships, and particularly he gets into romantic relationships, but this, this applies to pretty much any kind of relationship. You often have people that are victims and heroes, and these are both people that are very, very entitled and are kind of being narcissistic. They're not actually interested in helping this other person. It's all about them ultimately. People that are victims constantly, they want people to take care of them. They will often create problems in their lives so that other people can fix it for them. And again, it gets into romantic relationships. You get with somebody and you want them to fix your problems. And that's a very selfish attitude to have. And ultimately, it's poisonous. On the other end of that, though, are people that want to fix other people's problems. They want to feel loved and cared for and important in other people's lives. So what they'll do is they'll constantly try to fix other people's problems. And what Mark gets into in this chapter, too, is that these people often get together and they create these venomous relationships. And these people will never really help each other because the victim will always create more problems and the the hero, the fixer, will often just keep fixing their problems. For a real healthy relationship, you need to be someone that's there for somebody, but you need to let them fix their own problem. And if you're somebody, you know, on the other end, you can't constantly rely on other people to fix all your problems. It's not healthy and it's not fair. You need to set boundaries. And trust is another thing he talks about. Uh, it's hard to trust people if they doing this because they're going to keep making these mistakes. He talks about cheating and how the reason that it's often wrong isn't the sex, but it's the the breaking of trust. So we need to have our boundaries set and we need to be honest with, we can't lie just to constantly stroke their ego. And chapter nine is an interesting chapter. Uh, it's called, And Then You Die. And basically what he talks about in chapter nine, and this is the last chapter, 
uh, is that you need to acknowledge that you're going to die. That is a fact of life. People often avoid the understanding that they will die. We choose not to acknowledge this, you know, try to move on and pretend it didn't happen, right? People don't want to acknowledge that they're eventually going to cease to exist. And this is scary for people. And it's scary for everybody. Anybody that tells you they're not afraid of dying is fucking lying to you, right? Everybody's scared of death on some level. This is why people often try to find ways to immortalize themselves. It's something he brings up. Uh, people build buildings. They invent new things. They start shitty podcasts because they, you know, they're hoping that, you know, eventually beyond their death, they'll have a legacy, right? Or, or people start families for this. It's all about living beyond your death. And this can also be, you have to acknowledge that you're going to die and that eventually you'll be forgotten and lost because this will allow you to truly appreciate your life. It gets back into this idea of struggles. We can't define ourselves. We can't figure out what we truly value until we have come to terms with these two painful truths. And that's what this book really, I think, gets to, is this idea that we have to stop pretending everything's hunky-dory, everything's okay. We have to deal with the things we don't want to deal with. That's kind of a basic overview of the book. There's a lot of other things he gets into. Mark, This Mark guy, uh, Mark Manson, it's a very interesting mindset. He has other books that I may check out sometime, but I really do like this book. Like I said, I think one of the reasons I really liked it is a lot of this stuff I already kind of agreed with. But he really kind of puts it down into words, some of this, the things that I've you know, kind of believed in. And he brings up things that I never really thought about. Like I said, the value of suffering can be hard for people to really come to terms with. But you, you can't, you know, it's not always delusional to turn a negative into a positive. But another thing he brings up too is that sometimes there are things that are just bad that happen. And there's no way to positively spin it. That's another thing he brings up in the book, is people will often pretend that a bad thing that happened was turned into a good thing. But really, there are things in life that are just bad that happen to you, and you have to accept it. And you have to stop pretending everything's okay all the time. Because if you don't allow yourself to you know, deal with that, and maybe have your temper tantrum or, or break down because something bad happens, you won't be able to move past it. So yeah, that's the book. Uh, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, A Counterintuitive Approach to a Good Life. Um, at this point, I guess I'm going to just, you know, bring up some announcements. So we have, uh, we're going to be working on the next episode. If you guys haven't seen, uh, the one on Kokoro Connect that we did, uh, check it out if you're interested in anime, I guess. I mean, it wasn't exactly a positive review, but, I, you know, you can still check it out. There's also still I Am Legend, if you want to check that out. Our next video should be coming out in a bit. It's going to be on, uh, like I said last time, it's John Wayne and True Grit. Now, I'm pretty excited about that. We still haven't got that artwork yet, but it's coming together. The guy we have doing it, I believe, has already finished the sketch itself. He's just coloring it, and it's taking a little longer than he thought, which I'm fine with. I want him to take his time. But anyway, I'm just kind of doing this video just before work. Like I said, I finished this book. It's only about 200 pages, so if you're somebody that doesn't read a lot, I recommend this book, particularly if you're lost in life. You know, Self-help books can be useful if you just pull what you want out and what you need out of them, not what you want, but what you need out of them. You know, you don't have to take everything this guy says. There are some things that he brought up that I don't necessarily agree with, but all in all, it's a great book. I recommend it if you're looking for a self-help book. Like I said, this is, I believe, the first or second self-help book I've ever read, and the last one was just dumb. I don't even remember the name, but it was, I, it was, it was just bad. Anyway, so I'm Cool Cat Jack. This was a quick little review I did. Uh, I got a probably going to start editing this video. It's actually longer than I thought it was going to be. So I hope you're all having a good day, you know. Hopefully uh, you're doing okay. I know the coronavirus has put a lot of people out of work. I brought this up before. Hopefully we'll be getting the checks soon, I believe within the next week or so. Hang in there, you know. I know everyone's going stir crazy because everyone's locked away. We got to do what we got to do, right? Anyway, have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Make sure you're doing your isolation, washing your hands, keeping six foot away from strangers. I believe everybody has to wear masks now, or it's a recommendation. Have a good day. Uh, bye.